Hey guys, today I want to speak to you about what does the Bible say about sex? What does God say about sex? The first thing I want you to understand is that scripture says the following. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. That word knowledge is the word light. In other words, if you don't have light on the topic of sex, you're going to find yourself into trouble. You're going to find yourself into issues. You're going to find yourself demonized, oppressed and even possessed if you don't understand what the Bible says about sex and what God says about sex. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is very simply, when you have sex of somebody, your spirit and their spirit becomes one. Second thing I want you to understand is very simple, is that when you have sex of somebody, your soul and their soul becomes one. Now, your soul is your mind, your will and emotions. So when you have sex of somebody, that means your mind, your will and your emotions becomes controlled and even influenced by another person. Third thing I want you to understand is very simply this, is God did not design sex except for the marriage bed. God's design is for sex to be enjoyed on and in the marriage bed. So you can have as much sex as you want, as often as you want, as long as you do it inside of the marriage context. Why? The marriage means covenant. Now, let's say you have sex with somebody outside of the marriage context. What happens? Well, very simply. Your spirit and their spirit merges and they become one. Two, your soul and their soul merges and it becomes one. Three, your soul and your spirit goes open as a door for demons to come into your soul and into your spirit. Where do we get that scripture from? Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 27 which says this, Neither give the enemy a foothold. The word foothold means access or entrance place. In other words, when you violate God's word, when you violate God's commands, when you violate God's blueprint and your soul and your spirit becomes one with somebody that you are not married to and that you are not in covenant to, it means simply that your soul becomes a highway for demonic oppression. Now please note the following. Let's say you sleep just with one person. That means you've now become one with one person. And if you've done that outside of the marriage context, Let's say that person sleeps with five other people. Now what you need to get, you're not just influenced by just one person that you've merged now with. No, you are now one with all people that the other partners also have been sexually active with. So it's not just about the one, it's about everyone that has been interlinked. We call this a spider web of demonic influences. In other words, you can find yourself in a place where you are so influenced by so many demonic attentions and so many demonic influence and you don't even know why. And I can tell you why. It's because you have violated God's blueprint for sex. So let me say again, God's design for sex is very simple. It's made for a marriage bed. Secondly, God's design for sex is that it's made for covenant and covenant only. Also, I want you to understand that God has it in mind that when two become one that they never get separated again that's why he says it when two become one let no man separate it ever again also what i want you to understand is that your spirit merges and it becomes one and lastly what i want you to understand is that your soul merges and it becomes one considering all of these things and what the bible says about sex and what scripture says about sex it's really important that you consider very wisely who and who you sleep with. In other words, you can't just sleep with anybody. You need to sleep with one person and one person only, and that is your marriage partner. Unfortunately, Scripture does not make room for anything else, so don't fall into other things. Fall into the blueprint of how God made it and enjoy sex with your partner within the marriage context.